I live by my one desire to hold off my defeat. For the reason why we must survive the cold and winter flu. Once the holidays have passed, spring comes back to you. For Christmas, I was listless, but I sang the New Year's song. For the presidents, I was reticent, but nothing really wrong. On Valentine's, I gave my love a caramel chocolate sweet. March 17, I wore the green and danced to an Irish beat. Cause the reason why we must survive the cold and winter flu. Once the holidays have passed, spring comes back to you. I check off the list and I try to resist running to a warmer climb. I made a decision and turned off television and stuck it out this time. For the reason why we must survive the cold and winter flu. Once the holidays have passed, spring come back to you. April Fools played by the rules, and I laughed at my own joke. Palm Sunday passed much too fast. By Easter, I was broke. Finally, the sun came through. The clouds were far away. Today. And the reason why we must survive the cold and winter flu. Once the holidays have passed, spring comes back to you. Spring comes back to you. Spring comes back to you. Back to you. Indeed, and we're so grateful it comes back. <laughs> when I was a kid, and yes, once I was a kid, we had a poem we would say around this time of year. Spring has sprung, the grasses riz, I wonder where the birdies is. <laughs> After a winter in northeastern Pennsylvania, with the cold and the snow, we were ready for change would look for signs of growth on the lawn, would spot flowers like crocuses and daffodils trying to poke up through the earth. And of course, spotting the first robin of the spring was a big occasion. In fact, if I remember correctly, you're, when you spotted the first robin, you were supposed to make a wish. Those who have gone through northern winters in this hemisphere deserve spring. They deserve the hope that winter is over and that things will once again grow and find their way to the beauty that they are meant to exhibit. Yes, here in Northern California, we do appreciate spring. The, flower, the fruit trees flowering, the calla lilies coming in the bud, the, an end to the threat of rain, days lengthening and all that goes with it. We appreciate your, our springs but there is something different after making it through the winter that winter in the North can bring. Mind you, I'm not complaining. One of the reasons I love it here is that is the calm winters, and that drew me here. Spring is indeed a special time of year, wherever you are on the continent. It rejuvenates, it renews and rejuvenates us. It brings it with it the hope of warmth and beauty. We can slough off the darkness, and the cold of winter, we can look with hope to the future. Now nothing, nothing exemplifies this feeling, for some of us at least, more than the opening day of baseball. Yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing a lesson, a sneaking a lesson in here about faith and baseball into our service. I hope there's some other baseball fans in the crowd here. But it's an appropriate time to think about such things with spring heralding the start of the season of this national pastime. 
Now, I don't denigrate others who follow other sports. Football, basketball, golf, soccer, auto racing, you name it. They are all well and good as they go. But, but to my mind, as a devoted baseball fan, especially a Giants fan, there's something about the start of the season that coincides with that hope and faith that the beginning of spring being, brings. As one-time manager Milwaukee, as one-time Milwaukee Brewers general manager Harry Dalton put it, hope rises each spring like sap in the trees. That's part of baseball. That's one of the greatest things about the game. You have, you have the annual rebirth no matter how disastrous the previous year was. Baseball, especially at this time of year, is all about hope. Last year, last season, doesn't matter. Who won the World Series? Doesn't matter. Who cares? This year, maybe, though, just maybe, is the year that my team will make it and will win it all. And that's the thing that baseball teaches us. Out of the 30 teams that make up Major League Baseball, only one will make it. But across the continent right now, fans in 30 cities and areas all live in that same hope. This is the year. And that teaches us a lot about faith. We live in hope even when hope doesn't make sense. In Major League Baseball, the odds are 1 in 30 that you'll win the World Series. 1 in 30, not so great. But we hope anyways. We are filled with hope when all is new and fresh and we have expectations about the future. Spring is like that and aligns perfectly with the start of baseball. Baseball also imitates life. As the one-time commissioner of baseball, A. Bartlett Giamatti put it, quote, it breaks your heart. It is designed to break your heart. The game begins in the spring when everything else begins again and it blossoms in the summer filling the afternoons and evenings, and then as soon as the chill rains come, it stops and leaves you to face the fall alone. You count on it, rely on it to buffer the passage of time, to keep the memory of sunshine and high skies alive, and just when the days are all twilight, when you need it most, it stops. As Chris Wagner, writing in the New York Times, wrote about Giamatti's quote, he's talking about baseball, but he could be describing life itself, sweet and far too short. Sports is joy and pain and love and hope, and yes, perhaps above all, loss. And just like life, it keeps us coming back for more despite it all. Baseball reminds us about loss. If in this game, if you are successful in what you do, three times out of 10, you're doing well. A batter with a 300 battering average, which means that he gets a hit about three times out of 10, is doing great. He's at the top of his game. That means, though, that there are seven times that nothing happens. He doesn't make it to the base. A strikeout is common. Likewise, teams are jubilant if they are playing above 50% of their wins. That's a lot of losing along the way. On my personal email, I have a signature that says, celebrate anything you can. It's sort of my motto of life, but it's as true in baseball as it is in life. You live for the wins and take the losses as they come, and, when you, celeb and you celebrate those wins when they do come. Baseball is also one of those sports without a clock, unless you count that new addition to the rules, the pitch clock. There is no length to a baseball game necessarily. As uh, Chronicle columnist Herb Cain put it, the clock doesn't matter in baseball. Stop, time stands still or moves backwards. Theoretically, one game could go on forever. Some seem to. We don't have a countdown in baseball, and that's the way life and faith should be. Live your life as if there is no end. Be a person of faith that goes on and on and on. And so it is spring, a time to watch for new life and rejuvenated rebirth. And what better way to do that for at least a few of us 
than through looking forward to a season of baseball. As Miami Herald sports writer Edwin Pope put it, it's true that spring baseball makes millions more promises than it keeps, but baseball is unlike love. In baseball, making promises means vastly more than keeping them. Baseball promises, like records, are meant to be broken. The promise is all that counts. If you're a baseball fan or a potential one, especially if you root for the Giants, Enjoy the season, live in hope, and remember that it's not always about winning. Take the losses and celebrate the wins. And so, well, you'll notice that I didn't talk about evil in this lesson, so I won't mention the Dodgers or Yankees. <laughs> and so it is, amen. So I invite you to get comfortable now where you are. Whether you're sitting here in the sanctuary or at home in a seat or a couch, just get comfortable and relax. Just begin to breathe slowly and deeply. If you haven't already, I invite you to close your eyes if you are comfortable doing that. As you settle into wherever you are, notice how your breath connects to you to your physical body and any sensations you may be feeling, images in your head, and thoughts you may have floating by. Take just a few moments to think about the energy of creation and how it aligns with the newness of the spring season. What does this time of year represent to you? Begin to notice how the energy of spring is stirring within you. What needs freshening up in your life? Is there a new project you're in feeling inspired to start? Now that the sun is out and the birds are chirping, what has you feeling passionate, excited, and motivated in your life? What are you going to create? Feel your own energy and become conscious of the sensations in your body as you breathe deeply. What are the words, phrases, or feelings that come up for you? As you think about the energy of spring and how you're experiencing it internally, ask the divine within you that this idea, this project, or this plan you're beginning 
be for your highest good and for the good of all who will be affected by it. Now imagine yourself going out into this new season and beginning the thing or things that bring you the most joy. Bringing your thoughts and ideas into your external environment and making them come to life. See yourself cultivating and harnessing the energy of spring, both internally and externally. Take a moment to note what you saw, heard, felt, ex or experienced during this meditation time. Take a few deep breaths. When you feel comfortable, slowly open your eyes, move around a little, wiggle your fingers and toes to bring yourself back to wherever you are. Welcome back. Okay, you're ready, right? <laughs> Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are an, an ocean, ocean of, of love. love. I'm going to make sure that slide is there. Uh, here at Unity Spiritual Center, we have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live. And each week, we join together in saying one of those statements. So please join with me in saying this week's statement, which is on the screen. Our values are, we are spirit-led, generous with resources, inclusive, joyously creative, and guided by integrity. And in this space, feeling so inspired by our vision, our mission, and our values, and feeling so enriched by what we've experienced here today, let us take time now to be a channel for that enrichment through our generous ties and love offerings. As Michael shares another song, you're invited to make this congregate to support this congregation with a check made out to USC or cash or by making a donation online. If you're here in the sanctuary, the ushers are coming forward to take your offering. Practicing the principle of tithing ourselves as a spiritual community, we are pleased to tithe 10% of the offering collected every Sunday to various universe, unity organizations and local nonprofits serving our city. Let us now take a moment to bless our tithes and love offerings as we cut them in our hands or hold them next to our hearts. And let us say the offering blessing which is on your screen. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. I have never in my life sung this verse before or even really actually heard it. Uh, this was uh, written right around the time my mom was born. 
Sounds like this. Katie Casey was baseball mad. Had the fever and had it bad. Just to root for the hometown through every suit. Katie Blue. On a Saturday, her young beau called to see if she'd like to go see a show. But Miss Kate said, some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out on the old ball game. And the story continues. Here we go. Katie Casey saw the games, knew the players by their first names, told the umpire he was wrong all along, good and strong. When the score was just two to two, Katie Casey knew what to do to cheer up the boys she knew. She made this guy sing this song. I love Katie Casey. <laughs> Please join me in blessing our tithes and love offerings. Spirit of the living God, bless the acts of our hands, our minds, our hearts. May everything offered here at Unity Spiritual Center be a reflection of all that is good within us. Grant us the courage to patiently listen for the stirring of your presence. Enliven our spirits with humor. Fill us with reverence for one another and gratitude for our diversity. May unity, beauty, and truth be the fruit of all we do. And so it is. Amen. So we come to a time of gratitude once again. Grateful to Michael and Ron for providing music. <laughs> Special gratitude to Ruben Diaz in the back, <laughs> who has bravely taken on the technological aspects of this service because Ben is not feeling well today. So Ruben stepped in after just a week or two of training and has been doing a marvelous job. Thanks also to our ushers, Valerie Hatfield and Susan Ledford for guiding. And especially also to Adrian Edens for being our platform assistant today. It's so great to have so many people involved in our service. Our announcements. Easter Sunday is next Sunday. This is Palm Sunday, so next week must be Easter. So come to the Easter extravaganza following the service. We're going to have a good time with food and fun. And wear your fancy bonnets, hats, headgear, helmets, tams, you name it. Put them on and wear them here. You know I was going to wear a can? <laughs> a can. No, tam. 